Hey folks, Mike and McGee here. In today's video, we're going to talk a little bit about firewood and tree management. This oak tree right here is dead. There's no doubt that it's dead. There's mushrooms growing on it. The limbs up top are starting to break out. It's dead. And if there's anything that I have learned over the past several years, you don't have much time with oak trees when they get to this stage. If I leave it another year, it's going to look like this. Hard as it is to believe, it's going to look like this right here completely junk. It doesn't completely upset me when this happens because it is a good woodpecker tree, but I'm overrun with woodpecker trees around here. We've got some kind of a blight that is killing our ash, our oak, dogwoods. A lot of our hardwoods are dying. So this tree right here, pretty big, and it's kind of leaning that way, and it's kind of leaning that way. So we're going to get it cut down and get it cut up. The boys are going to help me bust it up, and we're going to get it in that woodshed. I don't know what to think about Frank. He always sneaking up behind me when I don't see him. Now, the one thing about this tree, if you look up his tree, it's got a lean to it. Now, I'm not going to cut a huge notch for this tree because it's already pulling that direction. I want to cut a single slice in so that when it starts over, it will hesitate. It will close the gap of the saw blade and hesitate while I finish cutting that cut. and it never feels completely safe, I'll just tell you. And especially one like this, it's got a kink this way and it curls around that way. It's just a little bit difficult to predict what's gonna happen. This one here did exactly what I wanted. and It, it started going and then when the gap closed, it stopped and gave me time to get my saw all the way through the tree. This tree is too big to reach all the way through, so you have to do something about that. So that's the reason why you might have noticed I came around like this and cut sideways. I wasn't wanting the tree to fall that way, but I had to get some cut so that when I came on around, it would reach. And as you see, I barely, barely went far enough when I was cutting sideways. But I'm very happy with this. At this point, 90% of the danger is over with. Now we just got to get the wood cut up without cutting ourselves. Oh. All right, this one chunk right here probably weighs, oh, 200 pound maybe. <laughs> 150, 200 pound. And that's why I don't make these butt pieces for long firewood because it's extremely heavy. And the boys are going to be rolling this up on the splitter to split it but I'm pretty excited about this firewood. This is really good stuff. I'm gonna count these rings real quick and see how old this tree is. What do you guess this tree is? How old is it? Frank, what do you think, son? 85. 80, oh my goodness, this guy is possibly right on. It's hard to tell at the first and at the last. Right around 80 to 85 years old. Frank, oh my goodness. <laughs> What we can see by this is that the last 20 years or so was pretty good growing conditions for this tree. Before that, we had about 30 to 40 years that was pretty slim pickings evidently because these rings are real close and tight together, but then about 75, 80 years ago, it looked like it was growing fast. So I guess in my lifetime, we've had good growing conditions, but that's the funny thing is when you start having drought times, people say, oh no, the end of the world's coming. It ain't never been this bad, but the tree rings to tell the truth. It's been pretty rough in the past and it wasn't the end of the world yet. <laughs> Folks, cutting firewood will warm you twice. It'll warm you when you cut it, it'll warm you when you burn it. This here stump has got at least a day's worth of firewood in it. I'm not gonna cut it right down by the ground because the dirt and the rocks have dulled my chain. But I'm gonna cut that stump and get a good day's worth of firewood out of that. Now, 
Those have got to be the nosiest birds I've ever seen in my life. Anywhere we go, they're right under us. <laughs> All right, Matt, are you gonna unload this bay cell? Hopefully not. Good boy. <laughs> see what this weighs. It's on kg right now. Put it on pound. All right, let me get it set. What? All right. Wait. We got it figured out now. We're going to weigh this choker. I thought 150 to 200. We're fixing to find out. All right, start easing it up there, Caleb. Up. Hundred and seventy four pounds. All right, we got an ash tree here that the top broke out of. The ash, boy, the, the emerald ash beetle is killing all of our ash trees. This is a pretty nice tree, but it's dead. The whole top came out and just set right down. A little bit dangerous, but I'm going to go ahead and take care of it right now. <laughs> just about as good as oak for firewood. It's just amazing wood. And there's no reason to let it sit out here and rot to the ground. Look at these mushrooms. They're not, they're not edible, I don't think. Uh, they probably ain't poisonous, but they're just hard leather. <laughs> that the tree is dead. Bark's just falling all to pieces, but look at that. That ash. That almost looks like hickory. I mean, it's got that good of a grain. Definitely ash, though. According to these rings, this little tree is 65 years old. That's why we don't cut them until they are dead or they are posing a danger to a building or something. It takes a long time to grow a tree like that. We ain't gonna waste 
65 years of growth and let it just rot out here in the woods. We're gonna make heat. We're gonna cook with it. All right, folks, this is about the end of the day. What you see here is about, basically, I'd say all combined, probably two days worth. It'll take us roughly two days to finish filling this, I'm guessing. So that ain't a whole lot of time, really, when you talk about a whole year, basically a whole year supply of wood right there. My main focus of this video is like how to manage your woods. So if we didn't cut the dead one, but we cut a live one, then we're losing two. Cut the dead one, make wood out of it. Especially in this day and time when we got stuff killing trees, you never know what's gonna come through. There used to be a chestnut tree here in this area. Boy, I would love to have chestnuts for my pigs to eat. You never know, the oak tree could go away too. Who knows? I've got some nice big oaks and what I see them, when I see them now, my life has kind of changed the last few years. Now I see pig food. <laughs> I wouldn't have killed this tree for nothing. I really like the oak trees on my property, but when one dies, it's got a place to go and that is here. But that's basically all I've got for you today. We hope you have a great day. We'll see you on the next video.